because it's becoming clearer and clearer to me that what we have in front of us here in Matthew 25 is indeed a prophetical timeline, satirical prophetical timeline. I thought I'd sort of take a break out of the norm of presenting the videos, you know, using Luke 21 and everything, and just show you how this satire works. So that you can figure it out yourself with whatever history you know, and maybe you'll see a lot of things, probably will see a lot of things that I don't see about how satirical this thing is. If you don't read the Greek, you don't really have to. What you do have to be able to do is follow these numbers here. And here's your verse, so you can look it up in English. The trouble is that you have to use the Greek to get the satire and to get the timeline. Because it's using the syllable counts in Greek. Which is one of the ways you know that uh, Matthew, in particular, was written originally in Greek, as all the New Testament was. Because if you're using syllable counts to do a timeline, then that means you got the original. Okay? A translation isn't going to be able to make the same syllable counts and make the same timeline in the same order of the words. There's no way that two languages can be translated that way. You're lucky if you can get the same syllable counts, which I can do if I translated it in English. But I can't get the words in the same order to fall in exactly the same place. Okay? I can only get each clause to have the same syllables most of the time. So you're going to have to be able to count syllables. So in Greek, see this here? Right here. Tote. To, that's one syllable. Te is the other. Okay? And then you got, you're supposed to do a vowel and a, it's supposed to, the way syllables work in Greek is they're supposed to start with a consonant and end with a vowel. Sometimes, if there's rough breathing like here, that's ho, that O there with the little, like, apostrophe over it, that's ho. Okay, so that's one syllable. Ho, moi. Just like in English, we have diphthongs. Ho, moi, yo. See, ho, moi, yo. De, se, dai. Okay? So it's, it's enough like English that you can sort of figure it out. Ba, si, le, a. Ton, u, ra, non, deca, bar. Well, actually, well, because it's got two two consonants there, you, that's why you say par. Par te, noise. Okay. When you add up all those syllables, you got twenty-two. The twenty-two is coming off in addition to the sixteen seventy-three. And I'm not going to explain why these numbers are important or what they mean at the at this point because we're only going to use the AD function of this timeline. You add 30 to get to RAD. So this cumulative total of syllables from Matthew 24 because it's all one chapter in the Greek would be 1725 AD. Now, if you looked up in your English, if you can't read the Greek, you'll know that this is the parable of the ten virgins. Partenos. Okay, partenois, because it's in the dative. Partenos means, or actually plural, um, the partenos means virgin. It does not necessarily mean bridesmaid. It could. Okay, it means someone who's never had sex, who's unmarried, eligible for marriage. Okay, it has all those meanings in the word partenos. Alright? Now, this is a story of the ten virgins. This is the beginning of that story. So what Christ is doing is he's likening what we would call modern history here at 1725 by its end. And at the beginning it would have been 1704 because this is 1673 plus 30 equals 1703. So the first syllable is 1704. Okay, starting in about 1704, which is what we call modern history, just coming into the, the Industrial Revolution, he's characterizing the whole period of modern history, including our time now, within the story of the ten virgins. So he is taking that whole swath of history, turning it into a parable to tell you the character of the time. That You can't lose sight of that meaning because of the story that our time is part of. The, the wise and foolish virgins. 
okay? And you read on, oh, there's ten of them are wise and ten of them are foolish, okay? But what you're supposed to do is like, this is 6, 17, 25. So he's saying satir something satirical and witty about the time in the world between 1704 and 1725. And of course, one of the things that he's making clear, see, because he's saying this, it, homoi, let me read it to you, homoi yo te setai, he baslea, the kingdom of heaven, tuon uranon, the kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins. This isn't to be mixed up with the <laughs> Muslim 72 virgins, okay? This has nothing to do with sex. It's basically saying, it's talking about bride of Christ. So this is about church. This is not about unbeliever. He's tracing out history of the impact of the believer. Salt of the earth, impact on history. Because he's tracing out Matthew, I mean Daniel 9's man of time. That's what he did in, starting in Matthew 24. So he's still on that same theme, but now he's making a new analogy to it. So we have a storyline to go with the period from 1703 A.D. to long beyond our time, because it goes actually to here, which is 2041. So our period ends at 2041, and of course the, the scary question is, well, if that's when our period ends, because that's when the parable ends, what comes next? The answer is I don't know. Okay. It it's 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 scary because it, it ends on a bad note. The implication is that the world as we know it today is gonna be very is gonna then shift and become something very different because he's saying be alert because you don't know when this is coming. Okay. So whatever that future is, I'm not into getting all nervous about it because you can't do anything about it but what I am into is reading the time rightly today because that's our job as Christians so from 1704 until 1725 okay so the 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 period from 1704 to 1725 A.D. is like the kingdom of heaven with the ten virgins, the kickoff to that story. Now, how would that period of history be like that? Well, you know, you could be making a play on Queen Elizabeth. You could be making a play on some of the other women who came to power during that time. Okay? You could be making a play on a whole bunch of things. And I'm not sure if Elizabeth... You know, not the first Elizabeth, the, the I mean, Victoria. I'm not sure she comes to power that early. I thought she came to power later. But there's some, there's some woman that comes into power over a large swath of territory that he's making a play on. It's a satire on that. Maybe there's a total of ten women. It's that kind of satire. When he's talking about virgins and he's talking about ten and kingdom of heaven, that means there's some kind of stuff that was going on in the world at that time, where the most important part of it, which is moving gradually west, because he's tracing the man of time, which ends up becoming the Antichrist, that it's got a significant role playing into the development of that, that end. So I'd have to go look and say, well, what is what is the ten referring to? What is the, the satire on virgin? What is the satire on kingdom of heaven? What is the satire on then? Okay, but there is one. I just don't know what it is yet because I'm not familiar with that section of history. Okay, but the point for you to get is that this whole parable of the ten virgins is applying to our modern history. It's treated as one unit. Okay. Historically, we even treat it as one unit, but the important thing is that for prophecy purposes, he's treating it as one unit. Okay, so then we come to our period, which is right here. This is 2016, right here. Kyrie. Two syllables. Kir is how they do it in the modern. Kur is how they'd have done it in the old days. Ye. Not ye, but ye. Okay. 
Now, other writers in later books are not going to say yeah as the ending. Matthew's writing when it was still popular to use the Hebraism. Luke doesn't necessarily do it that way, and Paul doesn't necessarily do it that way. They say kuriye. And you find that out when you do these meters, when you count the syllables, you find out what kind of patterns they use. That's how I backed into knowing that this is a two-syllable word in Matthew, but not in Luke, not in um, Paul. Okay? So, assuming for the sake of argument that what I said is true, Lord, open to us. It's the second Lord. And this would then end, it says 1993 plus 30 equals 2023. Uh, That's when that phrase ends. And then, verse 12, he answers and says, so that's a seven-year period, not good, implies very heavy history coming up until 2030 A.D. Amen lego Truly I tell you. Believe it when I say. This is what's called an anaphora. It recurs throughout the two chapters. That's why we know that they're really one chapter in the Greek. And they're spaced. And this is all designed to tell you the relationship of this period to the last time this phrase was used. The last time this phrase was used was during the precursor to the English Reformation. So what's going to happen is related to and an outgrowth of the English Reformation. What is that? I don't really know yet. i got to think about it more. Okay? I'm in Lego Humin. Believe it when I tell you. Uk oida humas. That is not good. I don't know you. That's a Roman practice of saying that, that it's like disowning a person. I don't know you. See, because they're saying, Lord, open to us, as if they he's supposed to know them. And he's pretending that he doesn't. Why? Because they didn't want to know him. These are the foolish virgins. The foolish ones. Okay? This whole verse is about the foolish virgins coming back later because they didn't have enough oil, Holy Spirit, Bible doctrine, in them. And they had to go get some. By the time they finally get it, it's too late. The door, this is the word for door, is shut by the bridegroom who's up here. Bridegroom, in our A.D. terms, is 1974 to 1976. And we usually allocate to our political leader some kind of savior role. So the bridegroom, the person that we're marrying for political purposes, is somebody we're electing. Of course, we're in an election now, and we're trying to turn our leaders into gods. Open to us, open to us, let us get in. We want power in the White House, and we'll even use the fetus to do it. We don't care about God. We don't care about the fetus. We just want political power, so we're going to call you Lord. And the real Lord comes out later over in these next three bits between 2023 and 2041 and says, I don't know you. Yeah, because you didn't want to know me. You wanted Caesar, not me. So I'll let you have Caesar. Which means the Christians are in deep doo-doo for the next 40 years. I mean, it, it, I say 40 because right here, that's 2001, 9-11, and that's 2041 down here. For 40 years, we've been trying to get political power in the name of God. And God has said, my kingdom is not of this world. And by 2041, he will have made it clear that we Christians are full of doo-doo. And so he's going to say, well, I don't know you. The wise virgins, meanwhile, somehow it's kind of like the analogy of stealing in Revelation 7. The wise virgins got shut in with him. In other words, we already got developed. We already got marked out. Okay, but who's wise and who's foolish? The foolish are going to consider themselves wise, and the wise are going to consider themselves foolish. But that's the satire. Now, if you go through in your own time, Matthew 25, 10, and 11, you might be able to tell 
more of the satirical meaning for the period. This is period we should well know. See, 1946, the end of this, with nuncias, meaning bridegroom. Nuncias. It's, he's, he's running it together as two syllables. That's 1976. The yas of nuncias. That's 1976. That was the last year of Gerald Ford in the, in the United States. And if you're in a different country, you pick your country. Because there's a world timeline, I believe. It's mostly West, though. It doesn't mean that the, that Latin America is unimportant. Of course Latin America is important. It doesn't mean that Asia is unimportant. Of course Asia is important. The purpose of this timeline is to track the development of the rise of the Antichrist. So if you're in Asia, you're pretty happy that you're not included here. You don't want to be the Antichrist. You don't want to be the nation of the Antichrist. And what's really worrying to me now is that maybe it's the U.S. who's the Antichrist. Maybe we really are the great Satan. Okay? So I want to try and figure this out more. But just so you get a handle on how to use this timeline, now you can see. This is 2016. This is 2041 when this ends and he says, I don't know you. It does mean that the carnal Christians are going to get thrown out of their goal. Or they're going to think they're wise and they win. And the foolish ones are really the wise ones and we're the ones that get thrown out by the foolish ones who get into political power. It can mean either thing and those are antithetical. But that's how satire works. So I don't know enough about to say, you know, exactly what this is going to be. But you get the sense of how to use it. And of course, any ideas you come up with, I'd like to hear. So that's it for now. Peace out.